If you're wondering why LUTs or your color grading doesn't look right, then it's probably because you haven't done the color correction right. One of the most common mistakes I see filmmakers do is they just slap on a LUT or rush straight into color grading, but they don't really do any kind of color correction first. And that's one of the reasons why your footage might look very amateur. But don't worry, I'll teach you how to make your footage look very professional with these simple color correction techniques, even if you're a beginner. So you should always do your color correction first before going into color grading. Now real quick, for those of you who don't know what color correction means, it means making your footage appear natural to the human eye, the way you would see it in the real world. So color correction basically includes making sure that your exposure, white balance, contrast and skin tones are correct. Now I use Premiere Pro, but these principles are just as useful and important for you, even if you use DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut. Let's start the color correction by adjusting the exposure, contrast, highlights and so on. First we have to go to the Lumetriscopes here and make sure we have the waveform luma opened here. The waveform luma is to measure the different values like your exposure, contrast and so on. To change those different values we have to go here to the Lumetri color panel and we have to open the basic correction panel. And then we're gonna use these different sliders to change each value, like the exposure. Now, if you're unsure what the exposure value, for example, should be, there's a scientific way to measure it. And that's the Ansel Adams zone system. The way it works is you compare your footage to the Ansel Adams zone system and you see where the footage lies on the Ansel Adams zone system. And then you adjust the different values accordingly. Now in this case with this footage, the highlights here in the waveform should be around 80. So we're gonna go back here to the basic correction tab to the Lumetri color and we're gonna start with adjusting the exposure. So I'm gonna adjust the exposure to 0 0.2 and now if we look at the waveform it's around 80 which is fine. Next I want to do something for the contrast so I'm gonna change it to around 10. That should be okay. And I also want to decrease the blacks a little bit. So I'm gonna go here and minus 0 0.5 is a little bit too much, so I'm gonna change this a little bit. Let's change it to minus 0 0.3. And that is exactly correct. Because the general rule of thumb is that you should always try to have your blacks just above zero. You don't want the blacks to hit zero. And you also don't want your highlights to hit 100. So the footage is already starting to look pretty good, but I still want to change a little bit the highlights and the midtones. So let's start with the highlights. And when you look at the pillow, you can see that the pillow is a little bit too bright. So I'm going to bring down the highlights just a little bit. I'm going to bring them down to around minus 7.7. .7. That looks pretty good. And the midtones basically are everything between the highlights and the blacks. And that is the area where the skin tones lie. And the skin tones are the ones that I want to brighten up just a little bit. So we're going to go here to the color wheels. We're going to use the mid-tone color wheel. And we're going to use the slider and bring the mid-tones up just a tiny bit. Just a little bit. And there, it already looks a lot better. It's a subtle adjustment, but it makes a difference. Now, because I had all the settings in camera exactly correct while filming, there's not much I need to change in the footage anymore. But there's one thing that is a little bit off, and that's the white balance. We're gonna correct the white balance by going to the basic corrections tab, 
and we're gonna select this white balance selector and we're gonna click something in the image that is exactly white. And in this case, we're gonna click this white table. And there we go. Now it looks already a thousand times better. But now you might be wondering, but you see, what if there is nothing white in the footage? How can I adjust the white balance then? Well, don't worry, there's a very simple technique to do it. Let's go to the second clip here. Let's click to select the second clip. And then we're gonna go here and right click on the mouse. We're gonna open the RGB parade. The way the RGB parade works is that when all these three different colors are aligned on the same line, that's when you know that the white balance is correct. Now we're gonna go to the Lumetri color and we're gonna go here to the basic correction and we're gonna use this temperature slider and this tint slider to adjust the white balance until all the colors in the RGB parade are aligned and we know that the white balance is correct. So let's start adjusting. And first we're gonna start adjusting the temperature slider. I'm gonna pull the temperature a little bit to the cool. And I think that should be pretty good. But now we have to adjust the tint and we're gonna have to slide it a little bit towards the magenta area. So let's keep monitoring what happens on the RGB parade when we slide this. Now actually I think we're pretty close. That should be pretty good because the colors are aligned. But we can compare it by going back to the previous footage. And now if we look at the temperature, it shows that it's minus 21.5 and the tint is 14.4 on the magenta side. So it's almost exactly the same as on the second clip that I adjusted just by using the RGB parade. The next step is one of the most important parts of color correction, which is fixing the skin tones. To fix the skin tones, let's first go here. Let's increase the size by 150%. Let's move this a little bit to the left and a little bit upwards. And now we're gonna go to the effect controls and we're gonna select this pen tool and we're gonna mask and select the skin from the forehead. And there we go. Now we're gonna go to the Lumetri scopes. And here we're gonna use this vector scope to see whether or not the skin tones are correct. When the skin tones are correct, they should be exactly on this line, which is also known as the flesh line. And as you can see, the skin tones are pretty close, but not exactly yet where I want them to be. So we're gonna have to adjust them just a tiny bit. Let's go back to the effect controls and I'll remove the mask. And now it's time to go to the Lumetri color to the HSL secondary. And we're gonna select this pen tool here. And with this, we're gonna select the skin from the forehead. And we're gonna hit this tab to invert the selection. And now we have to just adjust the selection. And we want to mainly affect only on the color of the skin. So we have to be careful not to overdo it. Okay, that should be pretty good. And let's denoise it a little bit to make it smoother. Around 40 is quite good. And then also let's blur the selection just a little bit around nine to make it more smooth so that the selection won't be so harsh. And now let's move down to the tint selection slider. And I'm gonna slide this a little bit to the magenta side to make it more red. Just a little bit. I think around six would be good. Now, let's deselect this. Looks pretty good. And let's go back to the effect controls. Let's select the pen tool. And let's mask again and select the skin from the forehead. There we go. Now we can go back to the Lumetri scopes. And now it's exactly on the flesh line. 
Okay, if you found this video helpful and want to learn more, subscribe to my channel and click the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload my new video about how to easily color grade without LUTs and my third video about how to make your own LUTs. Okay, thanks for watching and see you on Monday again. Take care.